You hear about serial killers in the movies, but most of us are fortunate enough never to come face to face with one in real life. Sadly, that's what happened to two women in Wilmington when James Bradley got out of prison in 2013. Bradley now has three murder convictions on his record, and a court just denied his latest appeal a few weeks ago. In tonight's Crimes of the Cape Fear report, WECT investigative reporter Ann McAdams looks back on what led up to Bradley's murder convictions and why one family is still waiting for closure. James Bradley's a serial killer. He's someone who methodically hunts people and kills them in a ritualistic and serial way. There's nothing particularly remarkable about James Bradley's appearance. He looks like an ordinary middle-aged guy. But ordinary people don't murder their own children. In 1988, James Bradley's young stepdaughter made the fatal mistake of waking him up when the volume on her cartoon got too loud. He killed his stepdaughter in Fayetteville, an eight-year-old girl named Ivy Gibson. Um, he actually double-wrapped her in trash bags and threw her in a dumpster and then went to her school bus stop, spread out a lunchbox, and called in and said she had been kidnapped. Bradley was convicted of her strangling death and got life without parole. But back in the 80s, you could get out after 25 years with good behavior. Bradley was released in Wilmington in 2013 and took a job with Mott's Landscaping. That's where he met a co-worker, Shannon Rippy Van Newkirk. Bradley wanted to date her, but she wasn't interested. And then she disappeared. I called it the Bermuda Triangle of Death, where women go missing, and, and he is the common theme in all of those cases. 24 hours after Shannon failed to show up for her own birthday celebration, her close-knit family filed a missing persons report. Police started looking into her phone records. When we read those phone records, there were some alarming things. There was one phone um, that we were particularly interested in, a number that we hadn't recognized before that had called her 17 times in the three days leading up to her disappearance and stopped immediately at the time she went missing. That phone number belonged to James Bradley. He told detectives he'd seen Shannon a couple of days before she went missing, but didn't know anything else. His story fell apart when police found the two of them together on surveillance video just before Shannon disappeared. With a prime suspect coming into focus, crews began to search areas Bradley frequented for his landscaping job. Three weeks later, they made a grim discovery in a field in Hampstead. In a shallow grave, double wrapped in trash bags, just like Ivy Gibson had been, there was the decomposing body of a, of a woman who authorities, of course, believed was Shannon Rippey Van Newkirk. Bradley was arrested for Shannon's murder, but investigators were in for a huge surprise. Within 24 hours of the first appearance, I get a call from Chief Ralph Evangelis at the Wilmington Police Department. Ben, are you sitting down? Yes. He said, my lead detective is at the autopsy right now. It's not her. What do you mean it's not her? We have another victim. The news shocked investigators, so you can only imagine the wave of emotions for Shannon's family. The detective called me and told me to pull off the road and then told me. My mother and my aunt at that exact time were going to make funeral arrangements. And so I had to call them and explain, you know, so then, then you're back on that roller coaster of not knowing and just hold, hoping and praying. The woman in the shallow grave turned out to be Alicia Tucker. She disappeared seven months earlier after getting into a sexual relationship with Bradley to help support her drug habit. And so now I want you to consider what we had. We had a body without a murder charge and a murder charge without a body. Despite significant challenges, prosecutors convinced a jury Bradley had murdered Shannon Rippey Van Newkirk. After two years, detectives found the evidence they needed to convict Bradley of Alicia Tucker's murder, too. I offered James Bradley to plead guilty and take life without parole for both murders if he would do one thing for us, and that is take us to the body of Shannon Rippey Van Newkirk, and he refused. And that's because that was the one thing he still had power over, people on the outside to cause them misery and grief. And that's evil. To this day, her body has never been found. It's something you think about most every day. My mother, almost every time I see her, asks me, do we know what happened to Shannon? Do we know where Shannon is? And it's the hardest thing saying no, we don't. 
um, I think it would just give us some closure if we could find her, you know, just know finally what happened or, you know, that just to, just to have some understanding. Authorities think Bradley would have continued to kill women had he not been arrested following Van Newkirk's disappearance. Another woman testified that Bradley had taken her to the very field where Alicia Tucker's body would later be found, but she got a bad feeling and asked him to leave. Ann McAdams, WECT News.